Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Matthew. And this is NF Geeks. Oh, I forgot to say it that time, sorry. <laughs> That's right, say it now. And this is NF Geeks. All right, great. That's okay. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. I've had that happen before. All right, for this last episode, Matthew, I want to talk about um, I want to talk about theology and religion and all these ideas mm -hmm. um, because I, um, again, I have a religious studies background in my master's degrees and, and PhD and all that. So this is all very, very interesting to me um, in a big way. And so since you're, um, you know, since this is your field, um, this is a great discussion to have on NF Geeks. So what I want to start off with is this idea that I have in philosophy class every time I teach it, and that is um, all the, I'd say all, but most of the British philosophers that you go through mm -hmm. um, are empiricists. You know, it's all knowledge through the senses. And yeah. because of that, they're all kind of atheists, okay? Lots of atheists in the British philosophical tradition. Um, through Bertrand Russell, you know, even um, you know, Richard Dawkins is sort of part of that yeah, yeah. tradition today. So it's interesting that to me that you're a um, a religious, you know, priest in a philosophical system that is kind of atheist. So um, how do you, uh, I guess, how do you interact with that, or what do you think about that? It, it's interesting in some ways because I mean, our our perception in in England of America. Is is that America is very very much more religious? Yes, I would agree. It, I mean, it's our perception. Um, what what we've got in England, I, I think, is a situation where you, you know, for for sen you know, I mean, obviously we had the Roman Catholic Church, but then the Reformation. I mean, yeah. so for four or five hundred years, we've had an established church. Mm -hmm. You know, which is is part of part of what it means to be English is, is being Church of England. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, so so you could get sort of seventy percent of the population declaring themselves Church of England, and and yet you might get seven percent of them actually go into one. Oh wow! Is that you, an you, actual statistic? Or? <laughs> um, I think roughly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'd have to check, but I I don't think I'm I may be off, but um. And, and of course, being an ITG, I'm happy to sh to be shown that I'm off. Oh, okay. um, But uh, but I, I think I think church attendance percentages are are somewhere around the seven, eight, nine, ten, that sort of region. You know, so it's it's quite low. Um, but I, I think because of the situation where we have where, where Church of England is just something you were by virtue of being English. Um, I think that for a lot of people, this has meant that. Um, you know, it's just assumed that that's what you are. So you, there's no need to sort of you know show up because people know that you're Church of England and and all of this. And there, there's a sort of sense of you, you know you know we don't need to get too too excited about things because that's not English. You, you, you know, we we just sort of sort of go along. And um, so I, I think what's happened in recent years. Um, I mean, I, I suppose. I suppose when we, you know, when Europe went through um, the Enlightenment, mm -hmm. you know, or um, Aufklärung, right. you, you know, or um, or that sort of stuff. I, I mean, thing, things then started to change with the development of the sciences and 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 all that sort of stuff. I, I think what happened was was that I think many of the people who, for centuries possibly, had been on the fringes of the church, you know, then then sort of veered off. Mm. Um, in, into these other other things, and I, I think the English temperament has has always been um, quite reserved, you know, in sure. many ways, but certainly certainly religiously reserved. And so I, I think what's happening now is is that whereas you know two three hundred years ago people were happy to be nominally nominally Christian, mm -hmm. these days. There's, it's much less so, and particularly, I suppose, since the 1960s, you, you know, with all, all that, all that fun that happened then. Yeah. You, you know, well, and the sort of radical changes in culture. Now, is um, and again, I'm kind of just sort of um, improvising off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, Britain, it's probably because of the British Empire or because it's an international, you know, very cosmopolitan nation. Yeah. Um, has a lot of 
uh, people living in there of different religions. Um, for example, I'm assuming there's a Hindu population, there's an Islamic population. Does that make any difference in, in any of this? Um, I, I suppose it does um, to the extent that um, people are generally speaking, I, I, I would think this is probably everywhere in the world actually now, mm. and people are less willing to, to accept established truths. Mm. You know, or, or meta narrative. You know, it's that sort of postmodern yes. and post postmodern. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I love that word meta narrative. I say that all the time. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pe people don't sign up to them anymore. Right. I, I mean, you, you know, and I, I think since since the the Enlightenment, certainly since nineteen sixties, um, you know, culture has become much more individualistic. And and I think there's good and bad to that. You you know, it. it I, I don't think it's it's a simple. Um, judgment to make, um, but I, I suppose with the individualism is grown a relativism is, oh, as yeah. well, where, where people say to each other, "Well, if you want to believe that you know that God became man, well, that's lovely for you, mm. you, you know." But I I believe in a leprechaun in the bottom of my garden, you, you know, <laughs> sort of, and and th there's there's a, an, an assumption that you won't challenge another person person because of what they believe, because we all have a right to believe what we want to. Oh yes, America is very much like that. It's yeah. founded on that. So yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so I I think I think that's the thing. And I think atheism is is something that's grown. I mean, exponentially. I mean, having said that, I I suppose in terms of statistics, I mean, atheists you know, represent a very small. You know, show up. You know, don't show up very highly. In, in sort of English, you know, British census, censuses or whatever the correct word is, um, but but it's it, it's stronger because I, I think the further we've gone from you, you know the meta narratives, you know, the received um, doctrines, you know, mm -hmm. received things, I think that you know it really has you know it's just the further we've got from them, and so it's kind of there isn't the same sort of grounding. So so people are saying, well, you you know, okay, two hundred years ago. Well, you know, let's go further back. Five hundred years ago, you know, we were Roman Catholic. Yeah, you know, we, we were in obedience to the Pope and uh, in, well, in communion with the Holy See. And then two hundred years later, let's skip forward, and so suddenly we hate the Pope and he's the Antichrist, and, and we're all radical Protestants. <laughs> um, and so I think nowadays we we look back and think, well, what the, you know, was all that? Yeah. You know, and, and I, I think for people who haven't got a strong faith conviction, I mean, you know, they look they look at the history of the church and they think, well, you know, you know, there's something wrong with it, really. Yeah. Well, that brings up a good question, um, and that is, is that okay? So, in light of all this, um, how do you either justify externally or just in your own intuitive thinking mind um, the existence of God? Um, you know the the resurrection. You know what what are some of your intellectual beliefs and ideas about God and all that in light of this? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I I would say that I'm creedally orthodox. Oh wow! I like that phrase. Um, yeah. What well, what does that mean to you? Like, define it for us. Well, well, for for me, it means that you, you know that say say the Nicene Constantinopolitan. That's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, half past eleven. That's I've I've done well to say that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed, um, you, you know, I accept it. You, you know, and and especially as a priest in the church. It's kind of this is what our our church is built on. Mm -hmm. You know, we believe in God the Father who made heaven and earth, all things visible and in, you know, yeah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I mean, having said that, I mean, I mean, that that isn't to say that I don't wrestle with with some of the you, you know the, the the sort of parts of the creed or or, or or you know the teaching of the church. So, for example, I mean, virgin birth. It's like well. I, I believe it, mm -hmm. you know, but I can't make sense of it, and that's frustrating. Oh, sure. You yeah, know, absolutely. I mean, you, you imagine if a girl in your town turned around and said, I'm pregnant, and by the way, I'm a virgin, you know, you know. You know. Um, yeah, they'd be so sent to I, a mental hospital or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, things like that, 
at the resurrection, you know, the ascension that we've just celebrated, um, it, it's all sort of, well, I, I believe in it, and but I, I think in a bizarre sort of way, and uh, this may be another curveball, sure. um, some of these things I believe because they don't make sense. That's what Kierkegaard would have said. That's exactly what Kierkegaard would have said, because he was mm. a theologian, not really a philosopher. He's my favorite. Yeah. That's exactly what he says. He says that, you know, Christianity, yeah, you're right, it's baddie, it's crazy, it doesn't make any sense, doesn't it? That's why you need mm. faith. You need, you need to transcend it because it's naturally absurd. You're never going to yeah. get there rationally. You have to make this leap. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean said, that... Sorry, um, go you, on. Sure, you said something before I want to... I've said this, I think, on NFTs before, but you said it, I want to say it again. Um, in the Because you said one of my favorite parts of the creed that is said in Catholicism and as a boy mm -hmm. it got me into thinking about metaphysics and, and the way it translates the way we translate it in Catholicism in American English is that of all the seen and unseen yeah yeah, so there, yeah and this fascinated me as a boy I was like what is unseen what am I not seeing you know what I mean? yeah. it got me into this whole abstract place so I'm glad that you said mm -hmm. that you know all right so go ahead uh, continue um, what was I gonna say um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that thing about um, it, it, it makes sense because it doesn't. Yes, you know, right. That, the, the, this constant inherent contradiction, you, you know, which, which I quite enjoy, actually. I mean, I like to have things, you know, neatly explained and you know, rationalized and everything else. And that, that's how I prefer to deal with the world. But but when it comes to my faith, because so much of my faith is, is built on experiences that I can't explain. Mm. You know, why did a nine-year-old suddenly feel that he was supposed to be in the church? Right. Why did a fourteen-year-old, you know, do, do this? Why, why, why did a why did a twenty-one-year-old who was suicidal feel that he had heard the voice of God? Yeah, you, you know, it, it's sort of their experiences that I, that I can't explain. You know, they don't make sense, and they, but they make sense because they don't make sense. So all I do is I follow. Yeah. You, you now, know, I, sure, the atheists would argue that, and they do argue this actually, that that whole position is irrational and illogical mm -hmm. and is off the path of yeah, knowledge. Yeah. It's actually taking you away from knowledge. Taking This is not my position, but this is what they would argue. Like Again, Richard Dawkins, I'm paraphrasing, of course. But he would say mm -hmm. that's an irrational path that's actually keeping you down, keeping you stuck in the past. Uh, not growing, whatever. How how would yeah. you answer that? Well, what is your response? It, it it's interesting because I've been watching videos of Richard Dawkins these these last really? few days, and um, I mean I mean, you know, many of them he's he's interviewing or being interviewed by um, Christians, and often sort sort of more extreme Christians, so creationists yes. or things like that. And yes. um, you you know you're a ninety J when you side with Richard Dawkins. I mean, the, the, you know, that's. <laughs> That's With, against thing. those people, yes. Yeah, yeah, and um, you, you know, I mean, I, I, I used to work with an atheist, and we, we discuss these things all the time. And mm. I, I remember once saying to him, I mean, we, we were great. We get heated and bang desks and things like this, and then we buy each other a beer, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. <laughs> but I, I once said to him, I said, look, you know, if 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 I'm wrong, and you're right. I've lost nothing. Mm. If I'm right and you're wrong, you're <laughs> right. You, you know, it, it was a, I, I said it jokingly. I wasn't sort of being all, all that serious, but but it's kind of like, well, you, you, you know, uh, there are things I don't understand. There are things I can't explain. Um, but all I do is is seek to follow, and right. and I hope one day to have the answers. And there's a logic to what somebody like Richard Dawkins says in in that you, you you know he people like creationists for example or or people of you know that very narrow um, literal understanding of everything you you know they they anything they can't explain is God you, you know what so so Dawkins answer to them is is well you, you know science can teach us that we go back this far. And get this, and and you know Dawkins himself would say, you know, that there are many things we haven't learned yet. That's not to say we won't learn them. You, you know, but none of these things I I feel have have disproved anything I believe. Wow. You know, because I don't believe in in a six day creation or you know six thousand you know year old Earth. 
you know, and things like that. So I don't see them as challenges because I don't think the writers of, of Genesis, for example, were trying to say how the Earth was created. No, that's right. I point that out in philosophy. It's more of a, of a history now. It's a history theory. The idea that the universe was created on purpose, you know, with a purpose to it. And again, for the ancient world, that's a new idea. Yeah. You know, the Sumerians didn't believe that. The, the Egyptians didn't necessarily believe that. Yeah. All right, you got one more minute. I'm going to give you one more minute. What final thing would you like to communicate about theology and your perspective? Well, the, a thought came into my head before you asked that, so I, I'm glad I'm here this time. Um, sure, bring it. I, I think I think I want to finish by saying that a atheism um, presents a big challenge to the church. Uh, that challenge isn't necessarily a bad thing, mm. because in a healthy way, what it should do is is force Christians or people of faith to examine, to understand what they believe, why they believe it, and and I think that. I don't think we will persuade atheists, and I don't think they will persuade us, or not all of us, anyway. Um, but I, I think we can all grow in, in that exchange. From the dialogue. Yeah, yeah. I think that's how we'll grow, and that's a good thing. Oh, well. All right, I hope so. You know, uh, in America, I have the opposite kind of situation. You know, I teach philosophy, and there's always an evangelical Christian in my class. <laughs> and they always, they always drop out. And before yeah. they drop out, they always quote Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, about how philosophy is bad or don't trust philosophy or whatever. Oh, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. They, that's, and so once they say that to me, I know, okay, they're going to be gone next week. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm sure you're very sad. <laughs> well, so, sometimes I am because sometimes they're quite bright and they could have brought yeah. this other, you know what I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're well versed in scripture, so that's interesting. So, um, yeah. They're not always argumentative, but I always feel like, you know, they could have added, they could have taken something from the class, just like what you just said. They yeah. could have taken something from the class that could have strengthened their faith, not necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. destroy it. My faith isn't, I have the same position you do. I have, I believe in God. My faith isn't shattered by philosophy yeah. or David Hume and all the 80s. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's uh, it. Good. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, say one more thing. No, I, I, I was just going to say, it just makes me laugh with some of them, where, um, you know, you present an idea. And um, you, you, you know, it, it, you, you just get this answer about this says we are Borg, you, 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 know, <laughs> you know, and and I've got no room for that. That's yeah. not INTJ. No, you, you absolutely, know, like you're, ab that. you're absolutely right. Okay, well, Matthew, thank you very much for this set of videos, and I hope you uh, come on again. I really appreciate that you did this. Welcome. All right.